Hi there, I'm Faro. In this video, I'm going to discuss about uh, estimating willingness to pay applying contingent evaluation. I link it there in the video description uh, to access the data and other resources used in this video uh, presentation. After watching this video, if you are interested, please click um, the subscribe button below this video. Let's start. There are two ways of estimating willingness to pay in applying contingent valuation. The first one is uh, using the area of histograms constructed from the survey data of contingent valuation, which I discussed in my first video. The other one is using econometrics, okay? Using econometrics. To make this uh, presentation clear, let me take a, a case where the techniques applied. A plan is uh, proposed that is constructing a road in a park. The road is uh, crossing the park and a researcher wants to know um, whether the community living around the park are willing to pay to avoid the construction of uh, this road because uh, it may put the park at risk. That's the idea. Okay. First, explain willingness to pay as a function of observable characteristics of the respondent. And then apply one of the limited dependent variable econometrics uh, functions. For example, logistic or profit function and apply this kind of model. It says lean of odds is equal to alpha plus beta 1x plus beta 2y plus beta 3a, where x represents bid values, y, income, a, for attitudinal and institutional and respondent characteristics. Okay. Once parameters are estimated using this formula model or model specification um, it is important to investigate the result against a theory and experience okay. for instance the coefficient of income is expected to be positive in other words the probability of yes response increases with an increase in income The coefficient of bid, which is beta 1, is expected to be uh, negative theoretically, which means the probability of yes response decreases with an increase in bid values. That's uh, what's expected from uh, any analyst when estimating the parameters. The result uh, should be investigated against theory and practice or experience. This is a formula we can use for calculating willingness to pay when applying contingent evaluation. You think the data I already shown you, which is this one, that uh, I will include the link or accessing this, this, this data in the video description. I obtained, I got, I got a willingness to pay of about $2.50. The procedure I followed to estimate this willingness to pay is that recommended by Lopez and Feldman in 2011. 
there's also a link in the video description to access this this material during a reporting result from continuous evaluation especially the willingness to pay both median and mean willingness to pay is reported but median is preferred because it's not affected by outliers outliers multiplying willingness to pay the mean or median willingness to pay by the population size gives total willingness to pay this total willingness to pay can be changed into net present value over say 10 15 or 20 years and the results could be used for appraisal of the proposed uh, project or plan this is the model output i obtained uh, using the data and let's see whether the result matched with expectation at least with theory this is the bit value as you can see it's negative it's also constant i mean significant at one percent so it's good it's consistent with uh, theory that we already discussed but if you see the quotient of income is negative it's almost significant at 10 percent but what the quotient turn out to be negative is something that a researcher uh, figure out and explain advantages of a continuing evaluation method when it deals with both used and then used values the second the results fit uh, theory which means it fits a theoretical monetary measure of utility change or welfare change there are issues with continuing evaluation one is artificiality or being hypothetical this is the main the main criticisms to continuing evaluation method as technique the problem with being artificial is that when making uh, uh, answering the question in continuing evaluation respondents are not constrained so the result uh, from answers given unconstrained compared to constrained might be different the other problem with artificiality is that uh, respondents might not be unfamiliar with maybe unfamiliar with the good or service to be valued in the continuous evaluation exercise these are the problems related with artificiality or being hypothetical other issue in continuous evaluation is biases different kinds of biases exist if you see sometimes what the respondent perceives and the researcher intends to do may differ maybe because of faulty scenario design that is uh, the good to be valued sometimes may not be clearly described which could lead to uh, this uh, uh, difference in perception and intention the other bias is called strategic bias where respondents give not true uh, a response to influence the outcome of the research uh, especially the provision, the provision of the plant proposed plan in the continuing evaluation uh, this is done either by overstating willingness to pay or understating willingness to pay hoping to free right. the other i mean biases could be uh, minimized could be minimized there are a couple of methods or techniques to do that one is having a good survey design which means pre-testing and holding focus group discussion before conducting the main survey in the continuing evaluation uh, 
which could help minimize the biases in continuing evaluation exercise. The other one is when, when respondents are making bids, if they are subjected to the following three scenarios, that could also help minimize biases in uh, the continuing evaluation method. These are first, only the highest bidders get the good. Second, everyone get the good if willingness to face above a certain level. Third, everyone is a uh, everyone who is a positive willingness to pay get the good. Okay? This uh, giving these scenarios when respondents make a bid in the continuous evaluation study can help minimize biases. The other bias is called aggregation. As you know, uh, when research is done, a sample is uh, taken, and based on the result from a sample, prediction about population is made. So, in continuous evaluation methods, generalizing to the population based on based on the result from sample uh, might be biased what's called aggregation bias because of the following reasons. Maybe the sample is not randomly selected, which is called sampling errors, or the sample size might not be sufficient, or non-representative characteristics of the sample are focused on, that is, if the survey focuses only on women, or men only, generalizing the result from such survey to population uh, might be biased. That's what we call aggregation bias. Now, the very important in a uh, continued evaluation is the processed response, meaning respondents give uh, zero when asked for their willingness to pay for a good or service in the survey. This zero uh, may imply one of the following. The respondent may uh, feel that the good or service should be free or governance should provide it, pay for it or protect it by now, or to free ride, or in fear of what if tax is required in the payment, or maybe for ethical reason, respondent uh, may not be interested to put monetary value on the good or service to be valued. For example, if, it is, if the good or service is environmental community, or to afford the payment vehicle. Okay. If um, all the possibilities we discussed uh, that related with the protest response included in the questionnaire as a follow-up uh, during the survey, Protest response could be ignored. Be ignored. Limitation of continued evaluation. When it already is mentioned that it is um, hypothetical or artificiality. The second one is it cannot be used to put a monetary value on a on a single feature of the good on the service. The willingness to pay for the whole project for the whole uh, environmental commodity. Uh, the appropriate technique in this case is what is called choice experiment which I'm going to discuss in my next series of videos. I've finished this presentation here for today. Thank you for watching.